confirm that you got something right and you're going to the next spot. You're not going to do that. If I'm the tester and I'm following Eric around, he sit there and he said something, and I'm just sitting there with my clipboard and my, my little pencil. And he's looking at me like, and, I'm, and I'll probably go, call, following you. It's up to you guys, correct? So you come and start the front of the vehicle after the end cap check. I start the top, work my way down. Clearance lights over the windshield. Covers not cracked, broke, or missing. Amber in color. It only says mirror, but I always told the fender mirror just to be safe. Fender mirror is securely mounted. It's not cracked or broke. It's not excessively dirty. It is adjusted for me. My headlight is here. Cover not cracked or broke. If I saw moisture in there, that would indicate a crack or hole somewhere. Parking lot or running light. Cover not cracked, broke, or missing. It has an amber bulb. Turn signal light, cover not cracked, broke or missing, amber in color. Then I'm going to back up and look underneath the truck, looking for puddles of uh, fuel, <coughs> coolant, or oil, which would indicate a leak. At this point, I'm going to open the hood into the engine compartment. right side or the passenger side of the engine compartment. I always start with my oil first, oil dipstick and the oil filler tube is on the other side. So I'm going to go to the next thing that I do, which is going to be the alternator. Alternator here is securely matted, not cracked or broke. Bolts and nuts tight and secure. The, the negative and the hot wire, that are they're securely mounted. There's no bare or frayed wires. It is belt driven. This belt and the other belt or belts, I will check them for play. There's no excessive play in the belts here, no dry rot, no cuts within the belts. Right underneath that off, there's a water pump right here. If you want to know, are they gear, belt, and all that good stuff? It is gear driven, it's securely mounted, not cracked or broke, not leaking any fluid, coolant, any freezer. You want to tell them. Come back here to my exhaust, which runs all the way under the cab, goes up to the muffler <coughs> mounted on the back. They're all securely mounted. There's no cracks or breaks. If there were loose connections or holes anywhere, there'd be black soot, which would indicate a loose connector or hole. I said that about five times. So now we're going to go to the left side or driver's side engine compartment. Got a tumbleweed in there. It's time to grow. That's not on the free trips. You don't have to name it if you don't want to. Oil dipsticks right here. If I was to pull that out, you don't have to. If it was on the add mark, I would add one gallon of oil in the filler tube right here. They're both securely mounted. They're not broke or cracked. Next, I want to go to my coolant reservoir, which is right here. See, it's one of those jugs you can see through. So it's on the almost on the max cold line. It's not below the min line. That's that sensor. If it gets uncovered, the truck's going to die. If I needed to add fluid, I would just add it right here in the filler cap, correct? It's not leaking, it's securely mounted, not broke or cracked. Next, I come to my air compressor right here. It's gear driven, securely mounted, not cracked or broke. Power steering reservoir is right here. If you miss that, guys, you ain't seeing nothing. Again, it's just like the, it's, it's like the coolant reservoir. It's got a clear top on there. I can see if I need to add fluid. If I did, I would add it right there. It's securely mounted, not cracked or broke. The hose is coming to and from it to the pump and to the gearbox. They're all securely fastened. There's no dry rot, no cuts. There might be a little leak right here in that fluid. Comes in my power steering pump, which is right here on the other side of the air compressor. It is gear driven, securely mounted, not cracked or broke. I do my steering column, not cracked or broke, securely fastened to both ends. Comes into my steering gearbox which is not cracked or broke, securely mounted to the frame of the truck. Bolts and nuts are all tight and secure. Now when I said frame, I named the frame of the truck here. That's my little ammo, that's what I do. Frame of the truck right here is not cracked, broke, has not been illegally welded together anywhere. There are no illegal holes drilled in it. And I come down on my pitman arm, which is not cracked or broke. Watch your eyes, it's ammo splinter, this thing. And then my drag link. My steering ring knuckle right here. They are all, none of them are cracked or broke. They are all securely fastened with bolts, nuts, castle nut, and cotter keys. Tie rods right here, not cracked or broke, securely fastened at both sides of the vehicle there. 
when you steer one tire, that's what makes the other one go, huh? They got all their bolts and nuts tight and secure. Now that's all done. Now, I'm going to start my axles. You're required to do this, the steer, one drive, and one trailer axle. Let's say, just for out of sake of argument, some of you was on the pre-trip when I did it the first and the second day you were here. I see my leaf springs. I talk about it. Then I come up here and my eyes fall in the brake chamber. Then I talk about the tire. Then I talk about the lug nuts. Then I come back here and talk about the leaf spring again. Then I talk about that again. Then I talk about the oil because I forgot I got it. And I want to make sure I got it covered because that examiner ain't saying a word to me. Then I talk about this piece again. Then I might talk about that u bolt. Then I talk about this thing again. Then I talk about the tires. What am I doing? What am I doing, Angela? Too much. Yeah, too much, huh? I mean, I'm all over the place. I'm just nothing but chaos going on. I like a little bit of order in my life, okay? The way I do it, I work from the inside out, and I see three different component areas. That's why I put it. I see suspension is one. That's where I start. My braking system is another area. And my third part is my wheel and tire. And I end up, I start inside, and I work all the way out here. Then I'm done. Top to bottom, in and out. To That's what I do there. Now, when I get to the drives, the braking system is in further than the suspension. But I'm not going to do the braking system because that's not how I do it. I will do the suspension first because that's how my mind works for me. I work different for you guys, okay? And I'm going to do the same routine. If I have anything extra, I will do the extra first and I get right back in my same song and dance. Repetition. Pete and repeat again, correct? Over and over again. Nothing changes. All right, this is how, this how I do it. Suspension first. Shock is right here, securely mounted top and bottom. Bolts and nuts are tight and secure. Uh, if there was fluid leaking between the top and the bottom of the shock, that would indicate a bad shock. Can out of my leaf springs, they're not cracked or broke. What else does it say on the, in the book about that? Anybody not shifted. Remember? Can't shifted. be missing. They're not shifted? Okay. They're not missing? That's a good one. Okay, they come into my spring hanger spring mount, front and rear. There's one back there, too. I think that's spring mount, and that's actually spring hanger, but if you just say it, either one, they'll give you the point, I'm sure, over there. Okay, they're not cracked or broke, securely mounted to the frame of the truck, bolts and nuts tight and secure. The U-bolts holding the springs to the axle, the nuts underneath are tight and secure. They are not cracked or broke. My suspension's done. So I'm going to start on my air brake system. Airline coming from the inside out. There's no dry rot, no cuts upon the hose. If I had air supplied, make sure no air is leaking out. My brake chamber is here. It is not cracked or broke. The band holding it together is tight and secure, and it is securely mounted. What comes out of there, that little fork, is my push rod. It's not cracked or broke. Securely mounted to my slack adjuster right here. To me, it kind of looks like an upside down ice cream cone. I like vanilla, by the way. All right. It is not cracked or broke. They are held together with a pin and a cotter key. If I had air supply to the system, it should not move more than one inch by pulling that thing by hand. That's how DOT knows if your brakes are out of adjustment. He crawls under there, has you release them brakes, gets a little ruler down there. And if he can pull that thing more than an inch, guess what? You're out of service. And you get a ticket. More likely, you gotta make money. And then from there, I go to my brake shoes, brake lining, brake pads. They're on top and bottom of the drum. They're not worn dangerously thin. They're not cracked or broke. No oil or grease on them. The brake drum is right here. It's not cracked or broke. Not misshapen. No oil or grease on it. I have an interaxial seal, and I cannot see it. Hence, interaxial seal. I can't see it. She was falling for you, man. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's a good one, huh? All right. Somebody tell me, told me that time. No, I'm not. I'm funny. All right. If it was leaking, again, I can't see the seal per se, but if it was leaking, it would be in my brakes, my wheel, and my tire. Okay? And then from there, I'm going to my inner and outer wheel, my inner wheel and my outer wheel. Not cracked or broke. has not been illegally welded together. Kind of my tire. I got to have the ICD, inflation condition depth. Inflation. Tell them 105, or what I tell them, check with the tire gauge. You can tell them manufacturer suggested whatever it says in the book. I don't know. What's it say, Tony? 120. 120. You can tell them. I don't care. Just be consistent on them. And if you got a tire, you don't have to have a tire gauge that day. But you got to. if you do it, you got to get one of them big gauges. It goes like 150, 140. Is that what they are? They already heard the joke this morning, so they're not going to blow it. You can do that, and if it costs like 20 bucks at Walmart, if you go to Snap-on, tool it probably cost 200 bucks i went to the bank here years ago i don't bank there anymore they give me an i didn't know they're gonna do it got a coffee mug still got the mug somewhere still got the air gauge it goes to like 55 pounds i check it twice i got 110 in there every time i check it man. <laughs> 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 and 
Andrew don't think that's funny. Boring, Steve. Yeah. Okay. It's my my class. Okay. Tire inflation, 105. Check with the tire gauge. Condition of the sidewalls and the tread. No cuts, no bubbles, no foreign objects within the tire. Rocks don't count. And I need tire tread depth, at least 430 second tread depth in every major groove. And I want virgin rubber. No recaps on here. I come out here to my lug nut. Oh, before I get there, I have my uh, valve stem. You can talk about it. I don't, but I'll let you have the option. Should have a cap on there to keep oil and dirt out. So when I want to check my tire inflation or add air, correct? Lug nuts are all here to count it for, all 10 of them, tight and secure. No shiny threads, no rust upon the wheel. If there were shiny threads, that means this nut is loose and it's working back and forth. If there was rust on the wheel, which is white on aluminum, black on steel, that means this thing is moving. I went through a puddle of water, and then when I set it, just coming down here and rusted. That's how I know. I come to my outer seal. If it was broke or cracked or leaking, there'd be fluid in my wheel, down on my tire, and down on the ground. And it's not leaking. You hit it with the big rocks, it's just a and I believe that's it on the axle. So I come over here, I'm gonna check my door. It's our line. I twist it up, open it, open it, shut the latches properly. Make sure I have a nice weather seal intact all the way around. I do except for right here. Somebody was trying to break out. You guys hear the news? <laughs> you want us to laugh before after? <laughs> a guy, they had a pickup. There were like 10 guys, four guys in the front, six in the back. Pick off, the, pick, the pickup wreck went into this river, deep river, six of them died. Four of them survived. The four in the front got out of the cab. The six in the back couldn't get the tailgate open, so they all drowned. <laughs> really? Is that really? True? <laughs> that ain't true, come on. <laughs> Because there's no handle inside the tailgate, right, Tony? <laughs> Hell, that's funnier than a joke. <laughs> Fuel tank is here. <coughs> the cap is on. It should have a nice seal so it does not leak fuel. <coughs> should have at least two metal straps here that are not cracked or broke. Holding the tank to the frame of the truck. Bolts and nuts are tight. Again, there's no puddles of fuel down there. So you get any leak. My steps here. I had separate steps, I'll talk about them the same way. They're not busted, broke, they're securely mounted. Turns in a light cover, not cracked, broke, or missing, amber in color. Catwalk securely mounted to the, to the tractor here. It's not cracked or broke, underneath that is my drive shaft. Drive line, it's not cracked or broke, has not been illegally welded together. Securely fastened to the U joint rear and front. Now we're gonna pretend I got a trader on here just for the sake of argument, okay? I know we don't. I got a pretty good imagination. Start with my airlines on the back of the cab of the tractor. They're securely mounted into the what? This is a tractor protection control valve, correct? Securely mounted, they come across. If I had air supplied through the lines, they're not leaking air. They're not dragging a the catwalk. They're not kinked in half where the airflow cannot come through. The glad hands are attached to the front of the trailer where they go. And if I was to take them, the handles off, I would check the rubber drommet and make sure there's not dry rot, missing pieces. If it was, I would change that rubber drommet. The electrical cord securely fastened in the back of the tractor. That door's got that little lip to keep that locked in from wiggling out. There's no bare frayed wires. It's not dragging the catwalk. It is not folded in half. It comes in, it's securely fastened in the front of my trailer. It's got that little door to keep it from wiggling out. So it makes a good solid connection. The front of the trailer, or the header board, whatever you want to call it, no holes in it. The panels are securely mounted together with all those rivets, I call them. And if I take a step back and I look up on the front top, I got a run, I got a clear slide up there, covering that crack, broke or missing, amber in color. You see that? Mitch looking see. Look. see, it's up there, isn't it? Yeah. I got a light. Told you, man. Now, he didn't have to back up so far because he's taller. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody fixing the lens. That's on the other side. All right. We're going to come over and I'm going to do, before I do my axle, I'm going to do my fitch real next. And I like to do it without the trader so you guys can actually see some of this stuff better here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you spit on it, that'll probably give a little bit of lubrication. They're going to right. put this video on YouTube. And? What's your point? So, so. <laughs> What's your point? It's going to make you look crazy. I'm not crazy. 
God's word says I got a sound mind. I back. I go by God's word. All right. If this was locked in with the trailer, this release handle would be pushed in, and this locking mechanism would be over here. It would be locked in. This is the only one I know that we have has a locking mechanism. The other ones do not. So I would tell them there's no locking mechanism, but the release handle is pushed all the way in, so it should be locked in. Another way I could tell was to go around the back and look up in there and make sure the locking jaws are locked securely around the shank of the kingpin. Neither one of them is broke or cracked. And I come over here and make sure there's not a gap between the bottom of the trailer, which is what? Apron. The apron. And the top of here is called the skid plate. Is that right? Yep. It should have sufficient grease. Yes, sir, it should, Dustin. And there's not a gap between the top and the bottom of them. The platform skid plate. It's got to be a skid plate here. It's not cracked or broke. It's securely fastened to the platform, which is not cracked or broke. The platform is securely mounted to the frame of the truck. Bolts and nuts are tight and secure. Now, this has a sliding fifth wheel. It's got an airline. If it does not have a sliding fifth wheel, they're just going to give you the point. You do not have to mention anything. I might say it doesn't have a sliding fifth wheel, and they're going to give you the point. They got to. Okay, it's on the paper. Anyway, it has an airline. If I was to disengage though make sure no air is leaking out of there and these pins would disengage and I could slide my fifth wheel along my platform in order to distribute my weight over my drive tires to be legal to go down the highway that's all that's about there now we're right back on our axles we're only gonna do one axle what do I'm gonna do my suspension first if you notice suspensions out here my brakes are inside but actually I have two extra suspensions on here and I'm going to do them first I have an airbag and I have a torsion bar, a torque bar right here. It's on the axle here, frame here. The one over there is axle here, frame over there. To me, I call it a stabilizer bar because it creates an X, something like that, or sway bar. Keeps that frame from twisting up. In my mind, that's the way it looks like. I'm no mechanic, but hey, I get you the pre-trip, right? You can call it torsion, torque, sway bar, stabilizer. You can call it a dog bone, they don't care. But the only way you're gonna see that is either see the one back there, cop underneath there, or the because the trailer is going to be about right here, people. But you'll have to come up here and look under the trailer, or maybe even under here, in order to see that. So I'm going to do the two extra. I'm going to start with the one I know I can't hardly see. Okay, my torsion bar here is not cracked or broke. Securely fastened to the axle here, frame over here, bolts and nuts tight and secure. I'm going to come to my airbag. Tight air supply to it. If it's filled up with air, make sure it's not leaking air, no dry rot, no cuts within the bag. Securely mounted to the bottom of the frame, the top of the control arm or frame down here. Now I'm going right back in the same song and dance. There's my shock. Securely fastened top and bottom, bolts and nuts tight and secure. If it was leaking fluid between the top and bottom of the shock, that would indicate a bad leak. My leaf spring here, which is technically called a control arm, but you can call it a leaf spring, it's not cracked or broke. And there's only one, so there's no shifting there, huh? Spring hanger in the front or spring mount, not cracked or broke. Securely fastened to the frame of the truck. Bolts and nuts are all there, tight and secure. And I have my what? My uh, U-bolts there on the axle, holding that control arm or spring to the axle. There, not cracked or broke. The nuts underneath, holding it tight and secure. So what do I do? My braking system, airlines. Sometimes you stand at that trailer, you can see the braking system on the other side. You can name that. That'll be the point. You don't have to just do it right there because it's hard to see. Let you crawl up there. But I can see the brake chamber and airlines and all that, so I can just kind of. Look at the trader and see it. Remember, you guys are doing an open book test, remember? But if you never read the book, you're not going to know where the answers are. Okay, the airlines are here. If I had air supplied, make sure no air is leaking out, no dry rot, no cuts upon the hoses. Comes into my brake chamber, which is not cracked or broke. The band holding it together is tight and secure, and it is securely mounted. And what comes out of that one side of that brake chamber is my push rod, which is not cracked or broke. Fastened to my slack adjuster, which is not cracked or broke, with a pin and a cotter key. If I had air supply system, it should not move more than one inch by pulling it by hand. And I have my brake pads. They're not worn dangerously thin. They're not cracked or broke. No oil or grease on them. My brake drum is not cracked or broke, not misshapen. No oil or grease on it. Inner axle seal. Can't see it again, can I? But if it was leaking, it'd be down in my brakes, my wheel, my tire, and on the ground. I got dual tires. Got something extra here. I gotta know if I got a spacer or not in here. These have an angle built in. They call them bud spacing wheels. That's all I know they're called. They could be called something else. You're a tire guy, you might know. But if you look at the steer tires, they got an angle built in. It's the same wheel, excuse me, the wheel. It's the same thing. Now the other ones used to have a straight wheel. They had to put a metal spacer in there. 
to keep the wheels apart. So what I'm going to tell them is like, look, oh yeah, these got blood spacing wheels. There isn't a spacer per se, you know, so I don't need a spacer and I'm making sure there's no debris between the tires. No rocks, no bricks, no puppy dogs, kitty cats, <laughs> things like that. Okay. Now I can go back to my same song and dance. I'm going to do my wheel and tire, correct? Everything else done. Inner wheel and inner duel, outer wheel and inner duel, inner wheel and outer duel, outer wheel and outer duel. Not broke, not cracked, not illegally welded together. I can just say all my inner and outer wheels. I can do that. I got that done. Tire inflation, both tires, 105. Check with the tire gauge. All of my sidewalls and my tread, no cuts, no bubbles, no foreign objects within the tire. And I want at least two 30 second tread depth in every major groove. And I can't have recaps. I do not want my tires mixed up like a bias and a radio mixed up. It says something like that in the book, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. Lug nuts are here. They're all accounted for, all 10 of them. No shiny threads, no rust upon the wheel. Outer seal's not leaking. If it was, there'd be oil down here in my wheel. And my tire on the ground. Come back here, my mud flap with splash guards here, not dragging the ground. Not broke anywhere. It's held on, all the bolts and nuts are holding it securely to the hanger. Tail lights are here, cover's not cracked, broken, missing, red in color. Backup lights, I want to name them too. Cover's not cracked, broken, missing, clear, white in color. Cars aren't supposed to have reflectors. I guess you use that as a reflector. But if it has reflectors, I say cover's not cracked, broken, missing, red in color. If I got a license plate light, I'm going to name it back here too. Alright, let's go over and look at this. Stuff. 